Please welcome on stage Sebastian Helsler. Thank you. Welcome to my talk. Um, I will talk a lot about SEO today. Who thinks that SEO is a really cool topic? Oh, let's say cool topic. Two, three, four. Oh, oh that's, that's really good. Because last time when I asked this question, it was just two hands. So this is improvement about 400%. Um, th this is really, really cool. Um, we talk about several things. When my thing would work. Yeah. Quick introduction about the topic. Um, the SEO package 3.0, which was released last month. Um, the community packages for SEO uh, in NEOS that you can use. Now I have to click always twice. That's cool. Um, the Yoast SEO release uh, today. Um, that's really, sorry, a bit confusing here. <laughs> and uh, what's up next with the SEO world in NEOS. And a quick summary at the end. OK, maybe it works, kind of. OK, let's just try to uh, make it work. So why do I talk about SEO? Um, um, I, didn't w I was not into the topic for many years, uh, as most of the other developers, because it was this voodoo topic, and there were a lot of people online who made a lot of money with it by saying, Google does this, and you should do this, and then Google will be nice to you, and you will be the number one in the search results. But this was all based on hearsay, and every three months they said Google did something, and then you had to adjust again, and then your customer had to buy their consultancy, and then as a developer you had to implement something like hidden links or hidden text or something like that, and we all hated it. And um, so this was not fun. But uh, since several years now there are more and more actual facts about what you can do about SEO. There are rule sets, there are this documentation, what you should do, and you can actually check if do you do everything right from a technical perspective. Of course, you cannot um, fix the customer's text easily as a developer, but you can prepare everything in your site so uh, things should be fr uh, okay from the technical perspective. You can give the pointers and hints to the editors and uh, help them to get a better result, then they can write their nice text, they can check everything. Um, and at the end, for every website, you can have a great website, but if it's not found, it's useless. And, um, and you can have a great technical site, but without a great content, it's also basically useless. So you have to find that sweet spot. And for every website, SEO is important, but still annoying. So I selected this topic for me in the last year to really work on that, to deliver for every NEO site a good basis that you can work with to make your life easier there. Let's see if it continues now. So we have the NEOS SEO uh, 3.0 package uh, released together with NEOS 4.3 because it was uh, it requires several things uh, from the latest NEOS release from the LTS to make it work. Um, it, uh, I will talk about all the features now, not only the new ones, but also the old ones, uh, because some of them also have changed. There's, of course, uh, basic stuff like meta description, SEO titles, and keywords, even if they might not be so important anymore. Um, the canonical link in the robots tag. Here we made some improvements uh, to automatically disable the canonical tag uh, as a meta tag or um, modify the robots tag if we already know that, for example, there are certain rules when it should not be rendered or there are rules when you uh, should have a certain value in there. So when we know already th this is the case, we do that now since version uh, 3.0. Um, we have the alternate language links. Um, this was improved also in, in the last two versions uh, to render when you have the language dimension, render all the links that uh, can be used by Google to provide uh, better search results for different languages. But they are, they are also used by Facebook to provide you the correct links based on the social share. We have the open graph meta tags. They were already in there for a while now. Uh, there were also some improvements there. We added more open graph meta tags, which are not editable, editable by the editor, but configurable. Um, 
but we now provided better fallbacks there. Uh, what happens if you leave them out? Because in the past, when the editor didn't um, select a type and didn't write a title and a description, nothing was rendered. Um, and often people forgot to do that. So they didn't have this open graph meta tags and the SEO tool complained or the SEO agency complained, stuff like that. And often there is nothing really to put in there that is different from the things that you anyway write into the site. So we introduced a lot of fallbacks there to um, take the title and the description, for example, just from the page properties that you anyway put in there. Often they are not different for Facebook, and if they are different, then you can still overwrite them. But we can basically always render those tags because we also always have sensible uh, content for them. We have some additional Facebook specific tags like the profile ID, admins and pages, um, which you can easily configure for your site. We have uh, the Twitter cards. Um, they've also been there for a while, but they, they also now fall back onto the open graph fields. So if you fill out the basic fields and then you fill out override the open graph fields, uh, the Twitter cards will then use automatically the data from there or you override them again. So this should save a lot of work. Those fallbacks are um, because we cannot always know what kind of fallback you want. So in those cases where it's a bit more difficult to guess what you want, for example, for images, we um, added some, we made the code much easier and we also wrote documentation how you, for example, for the images can add your own little fallback case where you say, if my site always has a banner, just take this banner picture when you do the social media tag. Uh, to save also your editors from adding the same image over and over again. And we will apply also um, presets there. Uh, same as uh, for the, the title, where you can also, for example, select a different the separator for the breadcrumb in the title, things like that, or a different suffix. We try to visualize field, uh, fallbacks now. You can see in this Let's see if my tool works here. No, it doesn't work. Um, you can see in the bottom, if you fill out at the top the open graph description, we now uh, change the placeholder at the bottom of the Twitter card because in the past, the editor didn't really have any idea what would happen in the, let's say, front end, but it's not visible, so front end is maybe the wrong word, in those meta tags because most editors have no clue what's written in the meta tags. And we found, okay, this is not a good solution. So uh, the first step into the direction, not the final step, is to um, update the placeholders with the information so the editor at least has some idea what would be the current fallback there. So if you write, this is my new description up there, it's uh, down there and you can still override it. Uh, that is a bit of a nicer way to, to show what's going on. You know, we uh, improved the social image presets. Um, we updated them from the current documentation from Facebook and from Twitter. So for both systems, there are now two presets pre-configured. You can also, of course, add your own. But um, as soon as the editor will now upload a picture, we will enforce this crop dialog. We will uh, give the preset that makes, in most cases, sense. You can change it. You can uh, select a different crop area and then uh, be sure that it m matches better the, what you expect when the p uh, page is actually shared on social media. If uh, you use the fallbacks, for example, and just, you just put an image in there, it will actually look at the image dimensions to select a better fallback, uh, to select a better preset. For example, if you have landscape and portrait, we look at the image size and then select a better one. We have the XML sitemap um, since version 2.1. There was uh, behind the feature flag the, that it contains all the images that you reference on the page and also the alternate language links. Both are still disabled by default, which you can enable quickly via Fusion because they are quite performance hungry because for every page we have to go through all the different dimension links, uh, generate, uh, we have to search all the images and so on. So you should test with your site, does it work well? Um, and if not, either disable or uh, generate a sitemap in a bit of a different way to be sure that this works out. 
Also, regarding the images, we use all, all the images that we find referenced. There might be uh, images that you reference, but you don't want to show up in the front end or in the sitemap that Google should not index, maybe, because there are some internal use, for example. Um, that's also why we don't dis enable this by default. Uh, robots text generation. This is also since version 2.1. Uh, previously, you had this little robots text file in the web folder and you had to change it and then upload it and so on. Um, now you don't need this anymore. Um, we generate a robots text file via or URL via Fusion. There you can modify it. We automatically fill it up with the normal defaults and uh, all the sitemap links if you have multiple languages easily to modify again, that was the goal. We provided in the last version the structured data helpers, we improved them now even more uh, because they were a bit hard to read last version, but now with some improvements to Fusion they are now much better to read, much smaller, and we uh, yeah, improved them. Come, come. We have uh, some defaults that will always be rendered now. This was also optional in the previous version. Now it's always active. We have the breadcrumbs. They will lead to a better um, display in the search results, like you see at the bottom, that uh, it's not the whole URL, but little breadcrumbs. We have the website element. Uh, it's c quite small, there's not so much there, but it can optionally also have uh, include, when you enable that, the link to your internal search function. So um, this way Google is able in the search results um, to show a little search box for your site. And then when you enter, the user enters something there, they will go directly to your search page. We have the social profile. This one is configurable um, either via YAML or via Fusion and can be extended there. And it includes all the social media links. It works for person, for type person and organization. Organization usually also has a logo uh, that will also then be displayed when configured. We have a few other helpers uh, that we need anyway. So for example, the image helper, you can render the structured data for images, for example, also your own. As I said, the website search um, object and generic extendable objects, the ones that we use to build our own objects and the ones you can build um, your own. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about with the structured data this stuff, you should look at the Google search gallery. If you Google and you see really nice results, like uh, when you look for something and then it shows information from Wikipedia on the right of the Google search results or uh, recipes that also have images and stuff like that, that's all generated from this kind of data. Google provides this website where you can see all the different structured data types that they recognize that they will work with. It's not a promise that they will use it um, they, for example, depending on the country, depending on your device type, they will render it or might not render it in the US. You can have a much higher chance to actually see them in Germany a bit less, but it's growing and growing. And recently they had some results for some online uh, e-commerce sites and so on. And they, for example, said that using the structured data and having nicer search results, they increased their um, sale by 50% or 80%. So in this search gallery, you can find all kinds of stuff. And currently, we're also thinking about which ones would make sense to implement into the SEO package, which would match a lot of pages. It would make sense, for example, to implement uh, um, fact check for every website, or maybe it should be, uh, I don't know, or a book. But for example, the news article could be something that we include, and then you can easily configure it and use it for your own site, and then uh, uh, you will hopefully get better results when um, in Google for your news pages. So the roadmap for 3x and for zero, the rough roadmap, it's not a promise, but something we think about and want to do. Currently, those SEO features are a bit distributed through NEOS. So we have this different inspector tabs. It's not really clear how the fallbacks work, even with our improvements, maybe. And here we want to improve the UI to make it uh, easier to know, OK, this is step one, two, three, four, five, uh, something like that. 
group them a bit differently, collapse them, maybe only show stuff when it's um, based on some other settings and so on, to, to make it easy for the editor to understand how to proceed, like a certain process to get the best results, to fill in everything that they need. Oops. The quick start wizard uh, would be something interesting that when you create a new page or for certain page types that you automatically get certain questions answered uh, as editor and when you fill them out uh, SEO fields will be pre-filled and then you know you did your stuff and um, things should be fine. For the sitemap generation, um, I actually tried uh, last year to find out how to do a good sitemap generation that works for everyone. Of course, that seems to be impossible. Um, with everyone I talked, uh, with every agency, they have their own kind of code to generate sitemaps. So it's hard to find this one solution that would work for everybody. So my hope is to, on the first step, to do it as asynchronously, to work with a job queue to say, let's generate the sitemap at night or whenever, every hour. Or, and then uh, say, okay, we, you can have a different data source instead of querying the node repository, which might be a bit slow for all those things. If we get all the images and stuff like that, we provide like a connection where you feel, feed in all your data that you, for example, got from Elasticsearch or from some other way, which is uh, performs better. And then we render the sitemap and you have less code you, uh, and you get the super performance uh, solution. What was the reason for all those improvements in the last year was the feedback from the community. Uh, only few of those ideas in there were actually from me or from, uh, from the, the core team necessarily. A lot came from during the sprints when I talked to agencies. Like everybody had their own little modifications or they had their own little SEO package, something like that. So we discussed, hey, how could be this make be easier? How can we get rid of those? Um, special solutions, hey, how can we extend the core to, to make it easy for you to, to include that, configure it a bit, and then have the right solution. So it's really important that you get in contact with us, with me, or on GitHub, and or in Slack, and discuss and give feedback, hey, uh, what would, do we expect from that package? What do we currently do differently? Why do we do differently? And then find a solution together, how to improve it. That would be really great. So I have to speed up, I think, a bit. Do we have community packages for SEO in NEOS, of course? We have uh, tree tree linked data. That's also for rendering structured data. Um, it's where basically works that you configure the structured data in YAML, and then it will automatically attach uh, the rendered structured data objects next to the nodes as soon as they are also rendered in the front end. So this way, when you have uh, the same, use the same node on different pages, it will automatically, automatically always include the structured data ball of, yeah, ball of data. Uh, it works a bit differently than what's in the NEOS SEO, but it might be interesting either to, to get ideas from or to actually use it. The NEOS redirect handler is a core package uh, since last year, I think. This is something you should always install as soon as the site goes into production, not when the editors play around. It will create uh, redirects uh, when you, for example, move pages. But this is a bit invisible, so it's nice that it works, but it's not something the editor could check and understand that something's going on, really. It just works. So there's also from Web Access the redirect handler backend. This adds a small backend module where you can add your own uh, redirects. This is something really nice for relaunch or when you see the errors that you get from Google Search Console, something like that, uh, you can add your own redirects there. This is also something where I think should be at some point in the core, um, but it's not fully ready yet for that. But it works, it does what it should. Uh, you can try it. Image optimization is always important uh, for SEO because the page runs loads faster, you get better crawl budget from Google, or you use less of it. There's the old image optimizer, which where you can select your library or use the default libraries to improve uh, images and reduce their size by 70-80% if uh, well configured. Sidegeist Origami does, as far as I saw, the same but with a job queue, so it does it asynchronously and doesn't block the page when you upload a lot of pages, uh, a lot of images. 
Um, since NEOS 4.3, um, you can now do the error page handling, for example, with a bit of fusion code, you can say, uh, when there's a 404 error, go to this subpage with the URL segment 404, for example. And this lets you, in most packages from my perspective, does it, uh, removes the need to install a third-party package to do those error handling um, needs. If you still have more elaborate needs, you can install, for example, Sidegeist Move Along or the mock redirect package and um, do it there. But in my pr uh, projects, I, everywhere I inst deinstalled those packages. I'm very happy uh, today to uh, tell you about that uh, SEO package, Yoast SEO package that I worked now for uh, about a year uh, is released in the 1.0 beta now, but the beta is still because now more people will use it, bit of feedback, but it's basically the stable final first version. Um, it's based on this concept or this prototype I presented two years ago in Hamburg, where I had this idea of a SEO something view. And uh, last year I implemented their open source libraries there and did a little of a test run. Um, it's also now an official from Yoast supported uh, plugin. They were advertised on their website and uh, we have a partnership uh, agreement to market and further develop that. So what is it if you don't know it yet from WordPress? It's based on the WordPress plugin. So it's actually, I think they have about 10 million installations of their uh, plugin for WordPress. It, what you see on the right, it will tell you while you write your cool blog post, what you do right, what you do wrong, what you should improve. And it also has a ton of other features to help you get a better SEO um, score from, from your content and a better result with the search engines. So in NEOS, it would look like that. You see a little video. We also have this uh, integration into the sidebar. You have the an analysis there while you enter content, modify your keyword that you want to focus on. It will run the analyzer in the background. It will not exchange any data with any server. It completely runs on your browser um, with the JavaScript library in the background. There's also the snippet preview mode, which you can quickly toggle with uh, a button there, where you can uh, see how it would look on Google. You can add it uh, like a bit more focused on your uh, SEO. You also get analysis down there, a bit better readable than in the sidebar where we don't have so much space. And um, this gives your editors a lot of feedback on what they should do. It's not their job to, to get 100%. That's also why there's only this uh, little faces with the different colors, because it's super hard to get everything right. So usually it's okay if you achieve 70% or something like that, then it will already turn green. For example, it tells you, hey, you have your headlines not in order, or you forgot to add the alt text to your images, um, or you didn't have, don't have enough links, or you focus on some other text than you actually want to, or some other topic. Uh, things like that. So this is a great help. And uh, the previous versions now, 1 point, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, uh, already already is used in a lot of uh, projects from different agencies. And I see a lot of downloads there and I only got good feedback there. Um, so this, I'm really happy now to, to pr um, release this as a version one and uh, go on from there. So in NEOS, you have the sidebar, as I said, o you can always now have it uh, available. I did some modifications also to the NEOS UI, so that works, so it doesn't get lost when you, for example, se select the content element. You have this focus mode in the center. And uh, what is really cool that uh, Yoast, they provide their analyzer, the free version, and the components which they use to build the UI. Um, as uh, JavaScript libraries. So because we use React in NEOS, I can easily use their components and just build those. The focus mode in the center that you saw is completely based on their React uh, code, which of course all the connectors to NEOS and uh, the analyzer works in the background to do, of course, the analysis. The 
work on version two uh, started also. Never stop. Um, I actually had a finished integration with the Google Search Console where you could see the errors that Google finds. You had a list, you could look, hey, here's a problem, then you can in the Neos back and fix that issue and then uh, mark it as checked and it, uh, where Neos will tell Google, hey, this is solved. This worked until two weeks ago when Google removed the API without replacement. Uh, this is very sad <laughs> and um, I hope they will make a new one. A lot of people on the internet are sad. So, and they also don't work with their API package with uh, good versioning, so it's completely intransparent what's going on there. So uh, I hope the best to re-implement it then again. Um, fully embraced the Neos React UI. I had to do some certain hacks to make it worth n work with Neos 3.3. So the Neos uh, Yoast integration version two would remove the support for Neos 3.3, so you should update. And then, for example, the inspector and the SEO uh, focus mode can uh, communica communicate with each other and things like that. That makes my work much easier there to get new features in and improve the usability, make the page load faster, things like that. It's interesting, sometimes it vibrates my little remote, but it doesn't do anything. Um, what will be included too in the version two or what the plan is, is better redirect uh, helpers for redirect management. When you delete a page or when you move a page, Neos will create those redirects, but maybe you want to give a little uh, modal dialogue for your editor to, hey, this is going on, what would you like to happen? Maybe they don't need a re redirect or they want something else to happen. So give a few different choices, explain what they will do, and then um, work on based on that. And maybe also tell the user about, hey, what redirects do actually exist already for this page or for uh, to get an overview or export all those redirects. Um, to, so because currently it's not clear and if there's an error in there, maybe with those redirects, it's it's hard to find out. Improve the user interface a bit uh, based on the feedback for the version one. I hope I will get a lot of feedback there. Uh, some people already told me about um, that, for example, people are confused or they try really hard to get all the red dot screen, which is almost impossible for some pages, uh, things like that. And um, of course, uh, like for the WordPress version, there's the premium variant, which offers more features. And uh, that's also, of course, something that we want to have at some point, because uh, working on it, it's nice, but also earning money and being able to provide even more features is even cooler. So for example, the WordPress version there, and that's something that I would like to transfer to Neos 2, uh, offers that you can add f mo multiple keywords that you, that you focus on and the analyzer will, will try to do that try to, to help you uh, getting there. Uh, it will tell you what you actually focus on in your text. That's maybe not what you thought you would focus on. So it would give you some ideas uh, what you would do there. Also linking suggestions in the system, for example, if you have some pages that would fit nicely to this content and would help the user when they read it, uh, that it tells you, hey, how about some links to those pages? and also export all the SEO data, the SEO results, and uh, for example, have then an Excel overview, how is the complete status of the system. Now, since today, Neos is now in this nice list here on Yoast.com together with Magento and Typo3. So I'm really happy to be there as this small CMS because I think that's a big advantage in marketing also. Uh, to c so you can tell your customer, hey, Neos is there together with those other systems and Drupal seems to be not able to get there right now. And um, this is so my part to help a bit into something that Robert said this morning that we should focus a bit on marketing, make a Neos well known and get it to more people. And I think this can help there too. I know from Type 3, a lot of people came and asked, hey, can we have the Yoast integration Type 3? And then it came at some point and it also helped a lot in selling the system. So the next level, do I have uh, two more minutes? Okay. Um, 
two years ago I talked about this SEO view. Now I have it. Now it's done. You, now you can play around with it. Um, so in two, year, in two years I want to present something else. So what I'm thinking about for half a year now or a bit longer is something like a SEO dashboard. You go in the system, you get the overview. Hey, what's going on? Where are problems? Where are the really good parts? Uh, integrate information from tracking from Google Search Console when it works again and internal uh, information from the site from NEOS when it does what I s tell it to do um, and add your uh, custom KPIs for it combine all this information and then uh, give for example editors pointers which pages might be uh, uh, worth to remove which pages shouldn't be changed because they are super successful or this whole tree in the back end is nobody goes there it seems to be not valuable anyway or it should be improved um, that's something that I think is really valuable for bigger sites because it lets the editors, they don't have to think about, hmm, this page might be important or not. So they can look at the system and say, okay, based on what we expect from this page, it seems to perform well, not well or not, and then maybe get some pointers, hey, maybe you should do this and that. So uh, as a summary, NEOS delivers a ton of great SEO features. Um, you should start using the SEO package now. And I'm really trying hard there. Yet yeah, click, please. Click again. <laughs> and there will be more to come. Um, I plan the next year also, of course, to continue working on all those SEO things. And the more feedback I get, the more we can implement and make it better for everyone. Um, thanks so much for listening. Uh, that was my topic now and I want to uh, send a big thanks to John Ullman who's always there to review all my pull requests and to merge all the code. Uh, he's a big help in, in, uh, in the last half year and feel free to contact me or uh, hire me, um, talk to me. I'm here tomorrow too or this evening. Yeah, thank you.